Hello everybody and hey guys. It is Thursday, it's Wednesday lesson of the day. Uh, we did a, a lovely day of consults today and follow-ups. The consults happened in the first half of the day. The follow-ups are in the second half of the day and we had all very lovely people. Um, really, really, really nice people. So we got lucky and my friend uh, Dan over here who's visiting um, thinks that everybody who comes to my practice is completely normal and nice because he got a nice exposure to the best. So I do thank everybody who came in today for being so sweet. The question we got today a few times was about lip healing and healing times and people trying to understand uh, how long it takes or how you heal from a lip lift. And I give the same spiel uh, over and over again. So you heard it about 10,000 times, uh, but I want to go over just so everybody understands lip lift, healing times, and even what a lip lift is. So a lip lift, so everybody understands, is any surgery that lifts the lip, anything. So it could be a vermilion lift, it could be a corner lift, it could be a subnasal lip lift, a bullhorn lip lift, it could be a double duck subnasal lip lift. Uh, th there's a bunch. So there are, are a ton of ways to do it. And even if you do um, triple VY plasty, some people call that a lip lift. You can try to put sutures in the lip, lip and bring it up without cutting anything. That's a lip lift. These are all lip lifts. Depending on which one you do, they have uh, pretty dramatically different healing times. The uh, Cupid lift, which is a uh, subnasal lip lift with occasional corner um, incisions, is a deep plane lip lift, which means you're actually lifting the SMAS layer off of the orbicularis muscle over there and advancing that up. And you're doing the same deep plane to, to lift this side um, over the laminar, laminar proprio over the muscle. When you do that, that increases your healing times. And the patients uh, who come to me get a four page sheet that walks them through what the healing times should be. Uh, it is very, very detailed. And when people read it, they think, oh my God, how did he know this was going to happen to me? Uh, he must have predicted my healing specifically, which no, it is uh, not so. It's, we are very similar. Uh, people like to think they're different. They're not so different. And if you sat in my seat, you would realize how similar people really are and their fears and their anxiety and their healing. And everything is, is fairly common across the board, especially in my patient population. The uh, thing that they worry about is how big of a warning my four page sheet is. And I tell them, I don't mean to scare you, but I kind of do. I want you to be very aware of all the things that can happen. I want you to be very aware of the timing. So when they happen, you don't freak out. When they happen, you'll look at the paper and you said, oh my God, he's a genius. He predicted that. Uh, the healing time, if you look online for my lip lifts, used to be pretty long for about a year or two. And what had happened, what had happened was I uh, increased the amount of dissection I was doing for a while. So this was several years back. So maybe like four or five years ago, um, there in a field like lip lifting, uh, especially with deep plane, which is something that I developed, there was no one before me to teach me, you know, how to do things or the why or why not. So I had to slowly evolve and progress. And um, what it, what the changes that I saw was um, as I went and dissected farther and farther out, uh, I just increased the healing time. And um, I had to do maybe 500 patients to 1000 patients like that. And then I started to regress and come back to do less dissection and see at that point, is there any difference doing more dissection versus less? And I saw that the healing time was much better when I did less, obviously, that's expected. Uh, but there was no negative um, effect or consequence on the uh, outcome of the procedure. And actually, I found other ways to secure the nasal base, which made the healing even better with, with less risk. Now, the immobility of the lip when you have longer healing times uh, may have helped some of the incisional healing because your lip moves less during that time. So it might even have a benefit. Uh, that was the theory in my mind or why people Botox the incision, uh, which is two reasons. One, one reason they Botox in the muscle is so the lip doesn't move while it heals. Um, that doesn't make much sense because a lot of the scarring happens after three months anyways, like towards six months and beyond. And the other is when you inject into the uh, skin itself, you can inhibit the either the pilosebaceous units or you can inhibit um, some of the little uh, muscular movement of the, the skin cells and the contraction of the myofibroblast and things like that. 
the healing time at this point, so everybody is aware, is much less than it used to be. So at this point, the procedure itself takes about an hour. It's under local anesthesia. This is my spiel to everybody. So the procedure takes about an hour. It's under local anesthesia. Uh, incisions are placed here and usually here and here. Uh, the um, aftermath is that you have stitches in for about five days. You, uh, the lip looks huge the first week. The lip looks halfway huge the second week. The lip looks a normal volume or size the third week usually. However, it is firm, stiff, tight and congested. Um, at this point, you can go back to normal life, although you can't smile very big and you feel awkward. By two months, it's almost better. By three months, it's better. You may still have um, some numbness, which gets, uh, sorry, some numbness uh, at the base of the nose, maybe a little runny nose. Your nose might still look a little altered. I tell people that their nose will not change considerably. However, there are dynamic changes that happen between the lip and the nose, which means that if you look at five photos from all angles, Four of them are usually identical. One of them might have a little nostril shape change due to the dynamic change in the lip and the nose. And this may be permanent, although it is mild. Between three months and a year, you continue to heal. And what you'll feel is numbness going back to normal, sensations of stiffness going back to normal, although uh, it won't look stiff. Uh, you keep healing over a year and beyond a year. We usually see you at six weeks to do a CO2 laser. We see you at three months to do it again. Most people are done at that point. They don't need anything else. We take their pictures and they graduate. Uh, Ten... 20% of people do need more lasers or injection modulation with 5-FU or uh, anything else. And uh, we see them maybe one more time, maybe 10 more times. So that's how it goes. And um, I've told this to people many, many times, but they do forget. So it does take three weeks to be decent. And it is definitely much better than it used to be. Um, the skin only lip lifts, meaning they just cut skin and they close it without moving muscle around or doing release over muscle or anything like that, tend to heal faster, although they may have a little bit more of a dynamic change on the nasal base, uh, just because they tend to have a touch more tension on the nasal base as they heal. And they may also, they, they, they don't allow you the uh, independence of deciding what to do separately with the muscle or the shape of the lip or anything like that. So you do get uh, much more control over lip um, lip design and lip height and everything when you do the release of this mass over everything. So it is worth a little bit extra healing time, but it is definitely much better than it used to be. So now when patients come back in and we see them around like three weeks or so, they look pretty good. Um, it's not, you know, a big smile or anything, but you know, I saw a patient today that we did five, six days ago. He looks amazing. Uh, we did his wife, uh, the same day along with a bunch of stuff uh, around the face and her lip looks pretty good too, even though the rest of the face is beat up still. So that is that. The risk to doing these lip lifts is very, very low. Uh, there's risk of scarring and risk of revision, which are kind of the same partially. Uh, risk of revision could be that you have asymmetry um, or inadequate exposure centrally or laterally, uh, or for you know other reasons as well. Uh, if the incision can't be treated with modulation, then we can always cut it out and close it back up again, in which case it may happen again. Um, the chance of needing a revision for a lip lift in my hands is about 1%. That's what I tell people. So that's that. That's the healing time for lips, if anybody's wondering. So for those who were scared to do it back when I was being uh, evolutionary, uh, it is not so scary anymore. It heals faster, just like it did when I started doing lip lifting, uh, you know, eight, nine years ago. So um, if anybody has any questions, go check out Cupid Lips page, sorry, Cupid Lips location Sherman's managing it yay and it's hola. opening hola and it's opening uh hopefully soon we're gonna have some amazing amazing staff over there injectors hey, lip products like it'll be the best lip place to ever have existed so we have cupidlips.com which we're gonna open up soon and then uh, as far as instagram goes we have cupid lift which shows this lip lift surgery but then cupid lips is for everything that is lips and we're gonna have a lot of cool procedures there uh, to help make the lip look younger more refreshed and a lot of lip products that you can't find elsewhere toodles <laughs>